this, this morning. I want to thank everybody for coming to the, um, the West Michigan Quilt Guild show and taking time out of your morning to join us. My name is Mary Smulligan. I own Custom Quilts Unlimited, which is in Fenville, Michigan, which is about 20 minutes south of Holland, just a little bit south of Saugatuck. Um, my shop has been there for almost eight years. Um, I also teach for the American Quilter Society on the AQS shows. Uh, what I teach is what I'm going to show you today is machine quilting on a home domestic machine. What I have for you is some tips to help you. If you're having problems, I'll give you some suggestions on what to help you through your quilt, okay? I've done over 700 quilts and haven't made a perfect one yet, okay? And probably never will, all right? Uh, I just, I've never strive for perfect, I strive for finished, okay? I, I wanna finish my quilt for myself, I don't wanna send it out, and that way it saves me a lot of money so I can buy more fabric which is what we like to do, buy fabric. So today um, I'm going to start with a few things that are going to help you get started with machine quilting because there's a lot of it that goes into it. It's not just putting the fabric under the needle and moving it around. What I'd like to start with is thread today, okay? What I'm going to tell you is things that I've learned from making over 700 quilts. You may take another class from somebody else and they may tell you something totally different, but we know in quilting there's nothing set in stone. It's all a gray area, okay? So these are my suggestions. I prefer 100% cotton thread, all right? There's a lot of brands out there. There's a lot of polyester, silk, wool, whatever, whatever you know, there's a lot of different types. I prefer the 100% cotton 50 weight thread. All right, 50 weight is um, rated by, if you had a 40 weight thread, that's going to be thicker than a 50. A 30 is gonna be thicker than a 40. Okay, so the lower the number, the thicker the thread. So 50 weight is really good for piecing and machine quilting, okay? And along with that, you know, pick the brand that you like and try it, and if it's not working for you, Try something else. Just don't keep getting, picking out the same thing and expecting a different result, okay? Try different threads out there. Um, I, my shop carries Guterman and Aurafil thread, and those two work well together. And about working well together, you never want to mix polyester and cotton. You don't want to mix, you know, silk and cotton. When you're working with two different brands and two different um, types of thread, a lot of times they don't work well together and you're not going to get a good stitch. Okay, so change colors all day long, but make sure you're staying with the same brand name in the top of your machine and in the bottom of your machine, okay, in the bobbin. Uh, the bigger the spool you buy, the cheaper thread is. All right, that's why I recommend the thread stands. The thread stands will hold any size spool. I've never had a, a spool of thread on my machine. I always use my thread stand. It comes into the machine much nicer, and it even makes winding bobbins nicer. They wind more evenly and nice and tight. So um, the thread stands are wonderful. These are the nice heavy ones, the metal ones. Um, they're not gonna move around, okay? Along with thread, we have to talk about needles, okay? Because if you have a really thick thread in your machine, like a um, 30 weight, if you have a small needle in there, you're not gonna be able to, sew, it's not gonna sew. It's gonna keep fraying and breaking and causing all kinds of problems. And this is with piecing and machine quilting. So needles, I like, how many is confused by the two numbers that they give you with the needles? They always say an 80, 12, or a four, yeah. So why don't we just remember the lower numbers? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, forget about those top numbers. Every, every needle made out there for the domestic machines will have the lower case numbers, okay? And forget about those higher ones. And it'll be much easier to pick out a needle. Now, if you're just putting two pieces of fabric together, I use the smallest needle, and that is a size nine. But you have to remember, the smaller the needle, the smaller the hole it's putting in your fabric, and also the smaller hole to thread it, okay? So if I had a nine in and I wanted to use 30 weight fabric, it, it wouldn't go through that needle well at all. And it wouldn't go through the fabric well because it's not putting a big enough hole in your fabric, okay? When they say a quilting needle, when you go and you buy a quilting needle, that's usually anywhere from a 12, 14, sometimes a 16, maybe, okay? You don't have to have a quilting needle to quilt, all right? You just have to remember the sizes. 
If I was going to quilt something that was just um, two pieces of fabric and a piece of batting in the middle, I could probably quilt with a size 9 because there's no intersections or seams or lumps and bumps. Okay? So um, pay attention to what you're sewing. To, that will determine what size needle you need. All right? If they say it's a jean needle, that's going to be a 16 or an 18. It's, it's bigger. It's putting a bigger hole in your fabric. It's going to allow the thread to flow in easy and easier in your fabric and out so you don't have breakage. And it also has a bigger hole in the needle so the thread can move through. All right, so your thread and needle goes the same. So the higher the number, the, the bigger the, the hole in your fabric, the bigger the needle, just the opposite of thread. Now if we talk about tension, tension is very important and piecing and machine quilting. If your tension is not adjusted correctly, you're not going to get a good stitch. Okay? I know mom and grandma and auntie said don't touch the tension. Okay? Today's machines are much better now and they're made to adjust. If they didn't want you to adjust the tension, they wouldn't allow it. Okay? So usually with machine quilting, we have to go to a, high, a higher number on your machine, making the, t the tension tighter. Okay? Usually with machine quilting, you need to do that. Very rarely do we have to go a lower tension. All right, um, I mean uh, a lower number. We always want to go with a higher number on your tension. The next thing is um, batting. Why would you pick a batting for your quilt? I mean, there's a hundred different brands out there. Does everybody just go and buy the same batting every time? Okay, so what, what you need to pay attention to is maximum distance between stitches. And what that means is if I use 100% cotton batting, you have to think of like a cotton ball or the old quilts that you've seen where all the batting is pushed to the sides of the blocks and there's nothing in the middle. The batting has all been pushed away. That's because cotton is like a cotton ball. You can pull it apart. There's nothing there to keep your cotton fibers together. All right. The maximum distance between stitches on 100% cotton is 2 to 4 inches. That means they only want you to quilt anywhere from 2 to 4 inches. Anything bigger than that, that cotton's going to break down after washing and spread apart. If we use an 80-20, and what that means, it's an 80% cotton, 20% polyester. That is your glue to hold the fabric, to hold your cotton batting together. Now you can go all the way up to um, 8 to 10 inches that you can leave not quilting. And that batting is going to stay together. All right? So read the brands. How many people think Warm and White or Warm and Natural is 100% cotton? It's not. OK? It's not 100% cotton. It's an 87.5 by 112, or 12.5. All right? So it has 12.5% polyester in there. And it's really hard to find that on their labels. I do have some labels printed up here, and you can find where it does say that, OK? Um, I prefer wool. Wool batting is very nice. It gives you a loft. It's very easy to quilt through. You can always use a smaller needle with that to quilt through, too, because it, it flows in and out like butter. Um, wool is anywhere from 2 to 6 inches, OK, depending on the brand that you use. And if you get all of those set to where you like and, and picking out the batting that is going to be best for your project, like if it's a kid's quilt, you're going to want something that's going to be more durable. You know, if it's a wall hanging and not going to be, you know, used, then you could go with 100% cotton that's not going to be washed very much. But just think about the batting. Don't keep buying the same ones and expecting a different result, okay? What we have here are skill builders. Yes? All fabric, all thread, and all batting shrinks, 3 to 5%, OK? For those that are washing their fabric and not washing their batting, they're really not helping anything, OK? Because the batting's going to shrink, too, and so will your thread. It only shrinks as much as the quilting will let it. So once you, um, once you get everything um, quilted, it's only gonna, it all will shrink together. I'm not a pre-washer. I've never pre-washed anything, OK? So when we're machine quilting, we like to have something to practice. We get these blank pieces like this, and what are we going to practice? These are pre-printed panels that will help you with designs. What the, are you layer them like a quilt, so you're going to need the um, batting and backing on it. And then we use the wash-away thread. The wash-away thread, 
this wash away thread goes in your bobbin, a regular thread in the top, okay? Now we've just switched different types of thread. We're not looking for stitch quality, we're looking to practice, okay? Once you have picked out a design on your skill builder, you go over and over the design until you feel you've got the movement to make that design. Then I want you to flip it over and do it on the back. Now you're gonna be able to see your threads from quilting it the first time, so now you're not looking at the design, you're just quilting it. And it will really help you learn how to machine quilt different designs. It gives you something to, to actually quilt. The next thing is, when you're having a big, big quilt, how do I get a big, big quilt in this machine? All right? You need to push the quilt in as far as you can push it, all right? mostly halfway. You always want to start in the middle of your quilt, all right? In the middle of your quilt, you want to start and you want to work your way out. You never want to start over here quilting and do some quilting over here and expect the middle to come out with any puckers, all right? You need to keep rotating and moving your quilt out. I never roll this. I never make it look good as long as it's out of my way. It's, it's, it's good, okay? You need a lot of extra room to the left of your left of your hand, uh, for your left hand to make movement. That's why a, a good um, extended table, or if you have your machine set down into a table, because your left hand is actually doing most of the work. The, the right hand is, is just holding the quilt back, okay? So along with the skill builders, they come with different um, skills. We have number one, number one, number two, and number three. Okay, number two has all feathers, number one has a few feathers and other designs. And how many people have the slider on the base of their, how many people have sewn it to the back of their quilt? <laughs> how many people have sewn it twice to the back? <laughs> okay. What we like to use is the silicone spray. This is a silicone spray for sewing. It's not going to harm any surfaces. It will not harm your quilt your machine at all. You spray a little bit of that on your, the bed of your machine, the table around it, and everything slides very nicely and you'll never sew the can to the back of your quilt, okay? And for $11.99, that will last you years, okay? The sliders get a little expensive, so, um, you know, share the can, let other people use it. If your machine applique and your needle keeps getting gummed up, Spray a little bit of that on your finger, rub your needle, and it won't gum up anymore. Now you have to keep reapplying it sometimes, but it really makes a difference in that. You'll find a lot of uses for it. So now I've filled up my, I've filled up my design. I'm really, you know, okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna take a spray bottle and spray the back of my quilt, and the bobbin thread is gonna dissolve from the wash away thread. I'm gonna pull my top threads out, and I can ready to use this again. Okay, you can also um, use this for basting. Okay, see how that pulls right out? Because all of your bobbin thread dissolved. So if you're gonna use the skill builders, please use the wash away thread with it too so it'll last forever. And the, if you fill it all up, you can put it in the wash machine, the design does not wash out. All right, for our hands, we have a lot of times that our hands are dry and keep sliding over the um, quilt. You can't get enough grip. I like to use the lickety grip, all right? I don't like to wear gloves because my thermostat is stuck on high, and once my hands are covered, then I'm really stuck on high. So I, don't, I like to have my fingers, and every time I try to thread my machine, I have to pull them off. So I like the lickety grip. You put it on, it's just a little salve-like, and let it dry, and you'll be surprised on how much you can grip your um, quilt with that. And then you don't have to wear gloves. The gypsy sit-upons are really great when you're going to classes because the, the, um, the chairs and stuff are too low. You need to be above your machine. You're, you, I'm still a little bit too low here. It should be at a 90 degree, okay? Because machine quilting hurts if you're not positioned correctly. You have to be, you have to be above the machine, all right? These, they let you flow back and forth when you're machine quilting and it really saves your back. A lot of ladies like to use them on their lower back or just to sit on them. I use two, okay, because I like them for both. But it's really helpful for um, classes because we know a lot of times we can't bring our own chairs and 
we're struggling all day and when we get done we're so sore and tense around our shoulders and stuff. You'll find the gypsy sit upon really help that. One of the other things, like I said, you really need an extended table for your machine. Now if I didn't have this extended on here, you see this is the only room I have to make movement. You can only do very, very little, little movements. The bigger the, the um, area you have to work with, the more you can swirl, move your quilt out to make bigger designs. All right? Um, when you want that intricate little teeny stipple stipple um, that looks like hand quilting, you, the smaller needle you use, the better. Okay, if you have a 12 or a 14 needle in and you're trying to do a little bit of um, stippling, you'll find that you're getting, seeing the holes because of the needle being too big. Put in, put in a small, small needle and then try your machine quilting for, for a real intricate stipple. You'll be surprised on how well it works. Um, there's a couple ladies that I know that they have won awards. They've won awards here. They've won awards for the American Quilter Society. And um, they do everything on a six inch throat machine. Okay? Um, it can be done. Um, I don't quilt for competition because I think that would take the fun out of quilting for me. All right? I don't want to, I don't want to get stuck on so perfect that I don't get anything finished. I don't stri like I said, I don't strive for perfect. I strive for finished. Okay, um, I do teach for the American Quilter Society. Um, I, was, I taught a class in Grand Rapids um, this year. I teach in Paducah. Uh, my show schedule is on the back of the card there. So, uh, and I teach, I do these classes out of my, um, my um, store too. So if anybody's interested, I take up to a group of five or just a one-on-one. -on -one. I never mix anybody in your class, okay, that you don't know, okay? Sometimes that gives people a little more at ease, all right? Um, you just have to check with me for a schedule. Those appointments are made, you know, when we're, it was convenient for both of us. Is there anything I can answer any questions on that people are having problems with? No questions? Is everybody quilting their own quilts or are they sending them out? Sending them out? Well, just try these small, just try table runners. You know, if you belong to a guild, they also, they ask, they ask for charity quilts a lot, you know, where they give to different charities. And that's the perfect time to quilt your own quilt, okay, and learn. Those, those people that are getting those charity quilts, they love them. They're not going to come to you and say, I don't want this quilt because this stitch isn't big or this stitch is too small, okay? There's another little tip I can help you with with machine quilting too, as far as your stitch length. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a machine that has a stop, stop and a start button where you don't need the foot pedal, don't use the foot pedal, okay? This machine, I have a stop and a start, so I don't need to use the foot pedal. I set the speed of the machine on the machine, okay? So now if you still had to have a foot pedal and you have speed adjustment on the machine, the pedal is to the floor and the speed is set on your machine. That gives you a constant speed of the machine and then you, you can work with your hands to get used to that speed. If you keep trying to adjust the speed with your foot, your hands are never going to catch up with your, with your foot or the speed of the machine. Everybody follow me? If you can take the, eliminate the foot out of machine quilting by either adjusting the speed on the machine or no foot at all, you'll find that your stitches are much, your stitches are much more even, okay? And believe it or not, the faster you go with the free motion when you're not trying to follow a line, the easier it is to quilt and the better your stitches look, all right? Quilting is not my favorite part about quilting. Piecing is. I love to piece, I love to machine applique, but they have to be done. Okay, I'm not gonna, I can't very well show quilts or in my booth and stuff that aren't done. They need to be finished and I could never afford to send them out so I had to learn that. Um, you don't need a fancy machine. Most of the machines that I quilt on have strictly a straight stitch. Okay, no zigzag, no anything. The speed of the machine is what I look for with machine quilting. This one I can quilt on, but this one's a little slow, but I love it for my demos because it's small and I can still fit a 100 inch quilt in here, no problem. You know, when I say a 100 inch quilt, 
you only have 50 inches in here. Okay, it's never 100 inches in here. So when you look at it that way, quilts aren't so big anymore. All right, you start with the middle and work your way out and around. And once you get out to the outer border, now you can start turning your quilt, go down that border, turn the quilt again, go down that, the next border. But if you look at a quilt and it's 110 inches and you're like, I can never fit that in there. It's only 55 inches in there, okay? So don't be afraid to do the big ones too. And like I said, it, it does take a lot of practice, and these steel builders are perfect for practice. And like I said, they'll last you a lifetime when you're using the wash away thread with them. The books, if you need an explanation on what to do with the skill builders, the books are available, but everything is sold individually, so you can either just buy a book or buy a panel or buy a whole set. You know, we don't like to make things so expensive where you have to buy everything. It's all sold individually. My next class is going to be in um, Lancaster in March. Then we go on to Paducah, and then we go to um, Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, North Carolina. Right now, they're all in Des Moines, Iowa for the um, Des Moines show, but I wouldn't miss the West Michigan Quilt Guild show for anything. This is, this is what my home, and I love coming to this show. It's all, you ladies always come and make it really nice and make it profitable for all the vendors too so we can keep coming. Um, yeah, West Michigan, if you don't belong to West Michigan Quilt Guild, they get a lot of na national known speakers in there and it's very inexpensive to, to listen to their lectures or take their classes, you'll learn a lot. But remember, at the shows they usually have free demos and it, you know, pick up as much information you can. And just hanging out with other quilters, you can find out a lot of information too. Is there any other questions? Yes. Yes, let's talk about the foot. The foot is a quilting darning foot, all right? They make them for every machine. They make generic ones that will fit on different machines. It bounces up and down, all right? It bounces up and down with your needle screw. Can you see it? This one doesn't bounce that much, but some bounce a lot more. If you have a quilting darning foot on your machine, it doesn't matter if your feed dogs are up or down. The only, because the, the um, quilting darning foot never comes in contact with the machine, I mean with the feed dogs. So you get, so it doesn't matter if it'll go, if it, your feed dogs don't go down. I have a couple of machines that the feed dogs do not go down and you can still quilt on them. Some ladies find that they have more, um, more, more control over their quilt if the feed dogs are up. But that really depends on your machine, okay, whether you can keep them up or down. So is there any other questions? Yes. Oh, the organ needles. I sell organ needles, and that's the brand. Instead of a piano, it's an organ. You get 10 needles per pack, and they're, they're $4.99, all right? And they come in 10, or 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 18, all right? And needles can get expensive. I like these because they're inexpensive, and I really like them better than any other brand. I think they're a lot stronger. So, yes? Well, if you're lucky enough to have a little back tack button on your machine, you can do that, but I always start with a little teeny stitch. I may even go back and forth just a couple times to lock the stitch down and then go. And then when you stop, do the same thing. If your thread breaks or you run out of bobbin, then you're going to want to um, go back over the threads that you just sewn so they're locked down with small stitches. Okay, because the stitches will come up. Now, if you were going to do professional, they leave all the threads really long, and they, they thread each, each um, long tail in a needle, and they tie it off, and they bury it into the batting. Now, that takes a long time. I don't have that much time to quilt. So I, just, I usually just give it a little couple. And if you notice the machine, when it, start, when it starts, it always takes a minute to speed up. Just don't move your fabric. Why to wait till it speeds up, then it's made a few stitches, and then start going. Any other questions? Yes. Well, if
if you you got to have your needle set for machine for um, needle down, where it stops down every time. No, not really. You just it's just your thumb. These are positioned where your thumb is. You're thinking about where you're going, and you know you're going to be stopping. And just I mean, it's really not taking either hand off. It's just your thumb. This is my stop and start here, and I'm just using my thumb. Well, I mean, this one will go all the way up to cut, which is the thumb, okay? And as long as um, you keep both hands on your quilt, it's not going to move, okay? Um, and it, like I said, it's just a finger. And everything takes a little practice, okay? <laughs> um, and, you know, stippling, meandering, well, you know, that's, that's, that's a no-brainer. I would stipple and meander every single quilt if I could because I don't really have to think about it, and it's a really good glue for my quilt. It keeps all the layers together. But because I'm teaching, I do a lot of other designs. But to tell you the truth, I only know about, I only do about 12 designs. If you go to my booth and look at all the quilts up there, they've all been done by me on a regular machine, and I repeat things with adding just a little swirl here and not a swirl on the next one. Um, with these designs, do, learn these designs and work off from them and just add a few little loops and swirls here and there, you'll find that you'll make your own designs. And remember, everybody's stipple is different, all right? No, no two people will do the same stipple. You know, some are a little more elongated, some are, you know, really round, some look exactly like puzzle pieces. It, I mean, if you're not quilting for competition, does it really matter? Okay, you, you have to satisfy yourself, and that's the only, and you're your worst critic, okay? So if you can just push past getting perfect and finished, you'll find that you'll, you know, you'll, you can do this. Everybody can do this on any sewing machine. I'd be love to teach some of you at, this, at my shop, or I'd love to see any of you ladies at the um, AQS shows taking the classes. Just remember, when AQS does come to Grand Rapids, book classes, because if we don't book classes, they're not going to have teachers, okay? And they need a lot of entries, okay? Because we, have, we were very down on entries this year, and that's a good way to get started if you're interested in doing competition. You know, they give away about $500,000, and if they don't have a lot of entries, your pretty chances are good to win. Okay, something. So, and we really need kids, quilts too. So I wanna thank you ladies for taking the time out today and joining us and we hope you enjoy the show and we'll see you in a couple years here. <laughs>